Let's talk a little bit about introductions. So this video is going to be about how to write an argumentative introduction. That's different than a literary analysis. It's different than a rhetorical analysis. In both of those, you're trying to give a lot of context for your argument. Um, so in the rhetorical analysis, we used soapstones, right, to show like when it was written and what was going on at the time and who the audience was and how all of those things are going to shape the rhetoric. Same with the Huck Finn papers. We talked about how you could provide context context at the beginning um, to kind of show how the theme of the novel is going to be important for when it was written and who it was written by. Um, for argument essays, the intro is a bit different. Instead of providing context, there are two ways to go about introducing your subject. So we're going to go through a PowerPoint here um, that gives you some ideas. So the two ways that you can do to an intro for an argument that work really well is one, the hook, and two, the funnel. So let's talk about the hook first. Um, a hook is meant to what it sounds like, hook your audience into your argument. Like you are fishing for an audience, you catch them with the hook, and you reel them in until you get to your thesis statement. And by that time, they're caught and they have to stay there for the rest of your argument. Um, so with a hook, you are trying to um, give the audience what they want at the beginning. And one thing that people really like is stories. So the intro is a great place to put personal stories, um, maybe hypothetical stories, like imagine, you know, this person is living in this situation. Um, it's really great to use um, just like descriptive details in that story so that your reader feels almost like they are going to be reading a novel rather than an argument paper. Now, you're still wanting them to be, um, you're still obviously wanting it to be factual and it will have, um, it will have like credibility to it. So you still want to use that academic language and so on. But when you read a really great piece of nonfiction, there's a slight blurring of lines between um, what is just like straightforward and scientific and factual and then what is storytelling and an intro is a really good place to do that storytelling because again it grabs people's attention when you have a story when you start with the beginning people like naturally want to know how the story is going to go and how it's going to end um, another way that you can start is with a quotation if you do that, make sure that it's an interesting quotation. Uh, that's not always the case. Like, um, it could be boring because just the quotation, what they're talking about is boring. It can also be boring because it's a cliche. So I don't know if you have been to a graduation, but if you go to a graduation, they will always have a quote that is like the theme of the graduation. And I've been to so many where every single speech starts with the same quote. Every single speech at my brother's graduation started with Theodore Roosevelt once said, and it was like the opposite of a hook. Like, oh, this speech is gonna be exactly the same as all the others I've heard, I don't need to listen. So if you're gonna use a quotation, make sure that it's interesting. Don't use, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, uh, Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. Um, use something that people haven't heard before. You can also start with a controversial opinion. Um, that can be a really tricky one, but sometimes that works. You don't want to alienate your readers and have them abandon your essay because it's too controversial, but you can kind of snare them because they want to see like how you're going to justify that opinion. This is a lot of the times how clickbait works. Um, and then last one, shocking factor statistic, kind of the same idea, which is like, you don't want to use something that would be obvious, like, um, you know, I don't know, something boring or something that's just like straightforward. You know, you don't want to start with 50% of this class is getting A's. Okay. Like, so what? Right. But you could start with the shocking factor statistics that, that really gets people attention. Like, um, oh, well, like my husband, <laughs> This might not be uh, the best example, the most wholesome example, but my husband, he comes from a town in California where they had the highest, when he was going to high school, highest teen pregnancy rate in the world. No, sorry, not the world, the nation. The world, that's a different story. But in the nation, his little city of San Juan Batista had the highest teen pregnancy rate in the nation per capita. And so that would be a shocking factor statistics to start your paper with and people could like suddenly be invested in it. So here's a couple examples of um, these different kinds of intros. 
when I was 17, an ice storm moved through my hometown in Arkansas and coated the roads and trees with a thin layer of ice. I remember the ice only because later that morning I would receive a phone call after a call that my nephew, Keith, was in the hospital. Um, this is an essay about healthcare. And yet they start with this description about being 17, being in an ice storm, he lives in Arkansas. None of that stuff is really central to his argument, but it does kind of color the story and give you enough detail that you actually are invested. So think about your personal narratives that you wrote. Think about how you added detail into that. Don't go overboard, but add a couple choice details to get their attention. Here's one, uh, a controversial opinion to start it out. Women never took a single step forward without being pushed back, first of all, by their opponents. Like, that's a big statement. Like, women have never been able to achieve anything without somebody trying to, like, push back. Um, she, she starts her essay that way to grab your attention. I like this one in the way that it uses humor. Rossini, the great opera composer, would recall only two moments of real grief in his life. One when his mother died, and the second time was out on a boat when a chicken stuffed with truffles fell into the water and was lost. So this is an essay about how important uh, good meals are to us. Um, and he starts with this little like anecdote, this little story, so that, um, you know, we have, we can laugh at it or like, I guess, kind of like giggle at it. And the humor could be a great way to get our attention too, only if it's appropriate for your argument. Oh, and then a real controversial opinion. You think to sign my death warrant, but you are mistaken. Today you hate me because in your heart of hearts, you still love me. Mussolini. <laughs> okay, there's a bunch of these. Let me give you an example of one that I wrote. Now, this is far longer than it should be. Um, this was for a much longer paper, so my intro could be longer. Your intro should be about, I don't know, six to eight sentences tops. But this one does do that kind of hook style. So it says in 2020, the world was introduced to the Corona-19 virus. In response to the global pandemic, many countries, including America, issued emergency stay-at-home orders. Office workers and students used the internet to work remotely. Essential workers were outfitted in medical protective gear and jobs in the entertainment field were put on furlough and collected unemployment. Though the economy suffered, the government felt that it was prudent to keep everyone in its citizenry healthy and safe. Everyone that is, except for America's prisoners. Prisoners already forced into tight living spaces were given no personal protective equipment. They did not have access to the kind of testing that essential workers had and the overcrowding of prisons meant that a far larger percentage of prisoners than average citizens fell sick and eventually died from COVID-19. Though the death of any human being should be considered tragic, many Americans did not think at all about conditions in prisons. And when they did, they dismissed prisoners as lesser members of society and thus not worth pity and attention. The treatment of prisoners during the COVID-19 pandemic highlighted an issue with American prisons that has always existed, the dehumanization of the prisoner. Through dehumanization tactics, America has been able to regulate a large portion of its citizenry to non-human status. But if the goal of imprisonment is eventually rehabilitation, then America needs to reform its prison system in order to treat prisoners as the valuable human beings that they are. So again, too long, but you'll notice here, my essay is not about COVID-19. I used COVID as a hook. I knew it was something people were interested in at the time. I wrote this last year. And so it worked as a way of getting um, people kind of like it applied to their current lives. And then I move into what my actual thesis is. All right, so that's the hook. The second style of thesis is the funnel. The funnel is like what it sounds like. Oh, I'm trying to make a funnel. My elbows don't go this way. Um, but basically you start broad and then you get more and more narrow as you go through the thesis. Um, so you start with something like still about your topic, but you narrow it down and your thesis should be the most narrow um, focus statement. So I have this example, it's a little bit strange. It comes from a student example, but I think it's a good, uh, a good funnel that you can look at. When people have had a long day, they usually do whatever they can to relax, including watching movies. So at the beginning, we're not starting with, in the history of the world, there has been entertainment. No, we're talking about people relax to watch movies. So it doesn't start that broad, but it starts broad. 
They could watch a cute animated movie, an intense action-packed thriller, a hilarious rom-com, or even a horror movie. One of the most popular genres right now is the serial killer documentary. Okay, we're getting more and more narrow. Now we know we're talking about serial killers, true crime. There have been countless movies based on different serial killers from the past. A serial killer is defined as someone who commits several murders without apparent motive and typically follows a common pattern. People have taken these serial killers and turned them into something they aren't. So now she's going to start talking kind of about this romanticization. Even if you don't stay up to date with true crime, you know the name Ted Bundy. So we went from movies to serial killer movies, to Ted Bundy, getting more and more narrow. While Ted Bundy was notorious for his many murders, good looks, and charismatic personality, he's extremely overrated because in reality, he lacked cleverness and creativity. That's why I mentioned that this was odd. I worked with this student to revise the thesis because it sounds right now like she's saying like, he should have been better at murder. She wasn't saying that. She was saying that it was, um, he was over romanticized. So we fixed that. But do you see how it goes down and down until this point about Ted Bundy is overrated is the most narrow point. All right, so that is introductions. You uh, can choose a funnel in, or intro. Either would be appropriate for your essay. Um, I think both work really well. It's really just what works for you and what works for your topic.